Nearly all of us have probably taken an antibiotic at one time or another. They're commonly used to treat bacterial infections. So if you get a cut, an antibiotic can keep you from developing a nasty infection. It's easy to think they can do only good things, but as Lindsay Wright reports, overuse of these miracle drugs has led to a big problem that people in the medical field are trying to combat. This is Marion University's College of Osteopathic Medicine, just west of Indianapolis. The school is fairly new. Its first ever class of students graduated earlier this month. Part of the school's mission is training future doctors to think about treating the whole body. No matter what field the, the physician goes into, they, they're trained to think as a primary care physician and they're trained to think about what's best for the whole body. This is especially important when it comes to prescribing antibiotics, which are used to treat bacterial infections. They're among the most commonly prescribed drugs used in human medicine, and they're commonly perceived to be harmless. And in the short term, Dr. Amy Beth Kressel says they mostly are. But long term, it's a different story. That's because the more we use antibiotics, the more the bacteria that the drugs are fighting are finding ways to resist. So bacteria have various mechanisms to share resistance genes, so they can swap genes. So again, uh, by using antibiotics, we have increased the prevalence of resistance. According to the Centers for Disease Control, at least 23,000 people in the United States die each year due to infections that are resistant to antibiotic treatments. And it can be even worse in other countries that have fewer regulations. Picture this. Our guts, for example, are full of bacteria, some good, some bad. Once you take an antibiotic, it clears your gut of all the bacteria, including the good kind. But some are left over, and they get stronger and develop resistance to the antibiotic over time. So bacteria that cause some serious infections are now becoming more difficult to treat. One example is methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, better known as MRSA, a common skin infection which seriously impacts about 90,000 Americans each year. MRSA is either the earliest or one of the earliest examples we have of a common, very important bacterial infection that became resistant to a common and very effective antibiotic. Although MRSA is just one example of the problem at hand, Kressel calls it the poster child for antibiotic resistance. And due to the resistance, health providers have to find other drugs to treat it. The problem is largely one of our own making. About half of antibiotic use is considered unnecessary. Antibiotics kill bacteria, not viruses. That means an antibiotic prescription for a cold or for the flu isn't going to do any good. And here's where the rub is. If a patient is sick, Sometimes they just want to be treated and they don't fully understand those consequences. That can put pressure on a physician. So if I'm in the office and somebody has a cold and they're insisting on an antibiotic, I might feel pressure to give them an antibiotic and I might say, oh, you know, I don't think they need an antibiotic, but it's okay, it's no harm. But maybe a year later, that same patient is going to have a urinary tract infection that became resistant to that antibiotic and now that gut bacteria is causing her urinary tract infection and now my usual option isn't going to work. Even with the best practices though, like only using antibiotics when absolutely necessary, Kressel says antibiotic resistance won't go away. So the key is how to slow the problem down. Kressel says that takes awareness, education, and a conversation. They are powerful, wonderful drugs when used right and absolutely life-saving. Life-saving, limb-saving, you know, we cannot not use them. Raskin says the best way to educate the public about medicine is to educate physicians properly first. We do try to make sure that they're trained in the right way before they're out in the field. So this is something they've grown they've experienced, they've been trained in before they even start, so it's not we have to correct behavior once they're active physicians, but they'll have learned the right way. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Lindsay Wright. Another area of concern is there are fewer antibiotics in development. Congress approved an incentive package five years ago in hopes of encouraging more manufacturers to develop new drugs. 
but it's still difficult for drug companies to get a big return on their investment.